Okay, step number 12. We are going to be putting some moldings around our top. Now we've already framed this top panel once, and now we're going to do even a smaller frame around for our top moldings as well. So we're going to do even more miters and frame around this one more time. It says, look at your estimating sheet for the dimensions needed for the top molding front and back and top molding sides. I've gone ahead and pre-cut these for you, so you don't have to go ahead and cut those. It says, get the 5 8 inch thick uh, boards from the wood storage room. Um, get the type of wood you're using for your storage chest. Back in the wood storage room, I've got these. Let me show you where those are at. Uh, you're going to need two long ones for the front and back, and then two shorter ones for the sides there. So back in the wood storage room is where I have those in a box. So right back here in the wood storage room, I've got all these pre-cut in these boxes here, and they're labeled with what type of wood it is. So I'm doing cherry, so I need to grab some cherry. And again, I'm just going to get two long ones and two shorter ones, or if I can get two short ones out of one long one, you know, enough to frame around my box there. So these two are good for the long ones. And then let's see if I can find some short ones. There's two shorter ones there as well. So these should work just fine. If I'm getting low on this stuff, just let me know and I can get some more pre-cut for you. Next it says get your top from the previous plan procedure and use the table saw to cut it down or the belt sander to sand your top to the correct size. Uh, it should be an inch and a quarter smaller than the outside width and length of your storage chest. So when you add your 5 8 inch moldings around each of the sides, everything lines up flush. So if you notice, as my top's on here, it's a little bit smaller than the outside diameter of my storage chest. So when I add these little molding pieces on to the edge, it should line up perfectly flush on the edge here. Now over on the other side, if I come over here and add this molding here, you notice that it's not flush, it actually hangs past a little bit on bottom there. So we need to trim my top down on the width. I need to cut a little bit off this side here, also a little bit off this side here, that I can make sure that this is perfectly flush. And that distance needs to be one and one fourth inches smaller than the outside dimension of our storage chest. Because those 5 8 inch thick moldings, there's two of them, and if you add 5 8 plus 5 8 that equals an inch and a quarter. So if I measure this over, looks like I'm 23 and a half inches long, and so I need to go, my top needs to be an inch and a quarter smaller. So 23 and a half minus an inch and a quarter should be 22 and a quarter. And my top right now is about 22 and maybe 9 sixteenths or something like that. So I'm going to cut that down to 22 and a quarter, which is one and one fourth smaller than the outside length. Now I'm also going to do the same thing to the width. So if I measure my width of my table, I am about 13 and it looks like 3 eighths. And so I need to make sure that my top is 13 and 3 eighths minus 1 and 1 fourth. So to get those cut down, we can either use a table saw, take a little bit off one side, a little bit off the other side. Remember, we want to take equal amounts. Or we could also just go to the belt sander and sand it if it's just a small amount. I'm just going to use the table saw for this cut. And again, I need to be an inch and a quarter smaller. So my first pass, I'm going to go a little bit off one side, and the next pass a little bit off the other side here. Flip our board around and move it to that exact ring. should be our full length minus an inch and a quarter from the outside of our storage chest. When we add those 5 8 pieces on either side, it should be flush. We're going to do the same thing on our width as well. And again, if you didn't want to use the table saw, you could just go to the belt sander and sand this edge, sand this edge, if it's just a small amount you're taking off. If you're taking off a lot, definitely come to the table saw and take that equal amounts off both sides. off the other side.
Okay, now that we've trimmed that, it should be able to sit flush on both sides. When we put our moldings on here, it should be able to line this up perfectly flush on the left, and with your other 5 8 inch molding, it should be perfectly flush on the other side there. Uh, if it's not, you might need to do some more sanding, other things, and just get it, things matched up. You want to do the same thing with your front and back. Make sure you check, put the moldings on here, and just get it flush on the front. Let, move things over if you need to. Flush it up all the way. You can just kind of run your hand across and see if it's flush. And then on the back side, check as well. Make sure that this board goes on flush on the back. And again, if we need to, we can do a little bit of sanding or other things. But try not to cut too much off. We want to get it just flush on all those. Next on step number five, uh, we want to put a routed edge on one edge of each of these moldings. Come over to router number four, the one with the 45 degree chamfer that same one that you did on your base molding around and we're going to run this through. Now on this you got to be careful with your hands being close. It's a small board so we could use push sticks to get our hands out of the way. Another thing that you can do is just make sure your hands never go in the area where the bit's at. So as you watch as I run these ones through I'm going to have one hand always about here and the other hand always about here but I'm never going to have my hand cross over where the bit's at. And just hold them nice and tight down on the table and tight against the fence. We're just going to run one edge on each of these boards. Just inspect to make sure there's not any ones that need to be ran again if there's any parts that came away from the fence and all that. If you would prefer that I run these through for you, that's fine. Again, you can use the push sticks. Sometimes it's e it is easier just to use your hands as long as you keep your hands farther away from that bit. The last step on this, number six, once you've uh, routed your decorative edge on each of these pieces here, uh, is to go ahead and do the miters and frame them around. I've already cut a couple miters on here, but again, you just want to do that same process like what you've done before. Cut one miter, line it up where it needs to go, mark your back side, and then go ahead and cut your other one. And we're just going to frame it all the way around with those miter joints there. Just making sure that your routed edge is facing the top as you do this. And I would also mark which direction you're cutting that miter so you don't forget on this. So go ahead and cut all the miters and wrap it all the way around. Make sure those boards are not cut too short. And we'll go ahead and glue and pin them on after that. Once you got them all cut, have the teacher come over and uh, check it just to make sure that all these joints line up nice and tight, everything looks good to go. And then last, uh, we're going to glue and pin them on with the pin nailer. Make sure you put glue on it though, don't just pin it only. And we want to make sure that it's flush on top. So when you do the pin nailer, don't have it on top of your storage chest like this. You're going to take the whole thing off and do this separately and I'll show you how an easy way that we can get these glued and pin nailed on with the top edge being flush because right now my top is actually sitting up just a hair above and we want that to be flush on the very top there. It'll hang below on the bottom but flush on top. Okay, When you're gluing this I found it's easiest put the glue on the edge of your top not on the molding itself but just on here because part of the molding is actually going to hang below the surface there and if you put glue on the whole molding you're going to get glue on spots that we don't want to have. So. Just put a strip of glue on the edge of the top, spread that around everywhere, 
and then we'll go ahead and attach your molding there with the pin nailer as well. And when you line this up flush, get it flush on one little end, and then we're going to shoot a pin nail in one of the corners here. When you line this up, make sure it's perfectly flush on top and lined up perfect on the angle. You notice it does hang over on the bottom. That's what we want. And then when you shoot these pin nails, you've got to watch your hands and get them out of the way and just make sure everything's lined up right where you want it when you go ahead and shoot those pin nails there. We'll just kind of make our way over. Now as we come to the next one here, if for some reason the top is not flush anymore, you can push that board flush or push it up or whatever you need to to flush that up. And then we'll get another pin nail in. And again, just make sure it's flush all the way around. If it happened to move a little bit, you can push it in or out a little bit and get that last pin nail in on that side. Be sure that you're not shooting pin nails out the back. Uh, so hold that pin nailer straight up and down so you don't hold them at an angle and go out the back side here. Now we're just going to continue to do this all the way around. Next we'll just rotate our board around, put glue on the other edge, and just kind of do this process all the way around. Whole edge. Don't forget to put glue on the miters now where the miters are going to fit together. Spread that around and then we'll glue and pin nail it on. Get enough glue that it covers the whole surface of that edge there. If you need to, add a little bit more, but you know you don't want to go way too much that it's dripping all over the place. Grab your board here and line things up. Get it flush, start on one end, and then if we need to, we can push along as we go, flushing everything up. As I come down here, I'm going to move this board up and down a little bit, just make sure it stays flush and I can just feel it to see if it's flush. Push it down. About four or five pin nails on these front edges should be fine. And then we'll just keep going all the way around until we get the whole thing framed. Once you get all framed all the way around, make sure it fits on your storage chest. Line things up on the edges how you want them. And uh, wipe up any wet glue with a uh, wet paper towel just to get all that off there. And then once you get it all wiped up, get my signature on it, and you should be good to go. I do have an alternate top as an option that doesn't take as long. So if you're a little behind on your storage chest, I'll tell you about that alternate top that we can do as well. Thanks.